Hi, hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's uh, <laughs> It's been a while. I feel like I just haven't had any ideas or any motivation to film or do anything really. I don't know. I think that it's just kind of the end of winter quarantine sort of slump season, if you will. Um, and yeah, I've basically just been a vegetable for the last two weeks. <laughs> but today I wanted to hop on and talk about some more books. I've seen a couple other YouTubers do this video and I just thought that it, they are so fun and I'm always so interested to see them because I'm a nosy person and I want to know what <laughs> people have been reading and what their favorites are. Because I feel like a lot of booktube is people like doing book hauls or like doing reviews, which is great, but I feel like there aren't enough talking about like all-time favorite books, um, which is why I'm so excited that people are starting to do these because then it's like you know that these are books that people like absolutely love and not ones that are just like, they were okay, they were decent, but um, it took me a really long time to figure out <laughs> what books I wanted to do for this just because there have been so many great books that I've read but which ones were just good versus ones that were like life changing or at least had an impact on my life and um, there are a couple that I don't have with me because I've lent them to people um, <laughs> but for the most part I have most of them here and I probably forgot a whole bunch too again like out of sight out of mind like ones that were great that I lent to people I just haven't thought of them <laughs> but um, yeah so I guess I will get started this book which is probably no surprise um, to those that know me or and I might have talked about it on this channel before but I can't quite remember um, but the first book that had a big impact on my life was The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Um, this is just such a cool book and I really, this book I think was really important to me just because it sort of reignited my love for reading and my love for writing also too. And just like, the story is so cool and Erin Morgenstern does an amazing job of like really immersing you in the world and making it feel like you're actually there like just her writing is phenomenal and this story is just so gripping the whole way through and so fun and fantastical magical kind of whatever and it's just like one of the first like more adult books that I've read about magic and it was just so fun and actually we read an excerpt from this in uh, my grade 12 um, class for writer's craft which was one of the classes that inspired me to do English in university um, and I loved that class so it was really cool reading that chapter in there and then later reading the whole book and yeah this is just awesome I feel like if you're in a reading slump you should try picking up some like this book or something like this that's just fun that really gets you back into things and yeah I just love Erin Morgenstern's writing and how much you can tell she cares about like the craft and it's just really evident when you're reading her stories and yeah, just so fun. I cannot recommend this book enough. And it really, I'm so grateful that it kind of got me back into reading. Alright, this next book I absolutely love and I really want to reread it soon because I read it a few years ago and it was just mind-blowing. I just loved it so much um, that... Um, it made it on this list. Uh, so this is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel and it's a literary fiction and I feel like this was one of the first literary fiction novels that I just really fell in love with and connected with the story and it's really cool because it's by a Canadian author and it's set in Ontario like post-apocalypse but I think what I loved most about this book about is commentary on like the importance of art because basically one of the plot lines in it is this traveling theater group goes around to like encampments or whatever 
post-apocalypse like pockets of civilization and um performs i think it's just shakespeare but it might be other classic plays too but um yeah anyway so it's just really interesting commentary on like art and like what's what's important in society and again the writing was just exquisite it was so beautiful and i feel like Emily St. John Mandel is an author that I look up to a lot in my writing and like if only I had half the talent <laughs> that she has. I just, her other book The Glass Hotel was really good too but I think this one just holds a special place in my heart. Um, I read it a few summers ago. Actually before I was supposed to start um, one of my English classes and it ended up being on the syllabus so it worked out perfectly. But anyways, I think that this, like, if you like literary fiction or are trying to get into literary fiction, this is the perfect book to pick up. <laughs> and I can't recommend it enough. Seriously. And I, yeah, I do really need to reread this because my memory is that of a goldfish. <laughs> so I don't remember a lot of the details. So it'll probably be like reading it for the first time almost, which I love when that happens. But yeah, also really interesting take on like post-apocalypse society and I think it happens because of an illness so um it might be a little bit freaky to read during COVID especially because it's set like mostly in like Toronto Ontario area so like if you're from around there like it might be a little bit freaky but that was one of the things that I loved about this was it just seemed so realistic and yeah, I could spend so long talking about this, but I'm going to try and move on. Okay, this next one is kind of an outlier, and that's sort of why I included it. Um, but it's a work of poetry by William Blake, uh, The Songs of Innocence and Experience. And it's the like collection, the whole thing there. And the reason why this is kind of an outlier is because I am really not into poetry it's usually not my thing i try to avoid it at all costs but i feel like the songs of innocence and experience was i studied it in first year university for one of my english classes and it was one of the first works of poetry that i actually liked <laughs> and then i actually understood because i feel like a lot of it mostly just goes over my head or i'm just like not it's not really my form of choice, we'll just put it that way, but I just really found myself drawn to um, these poems and I feel like they're just so raw and like such great takes on society that like, I mean, and these are were written, I have no idea when they are written, um, oh, okay, it says, um, <laughs> 1789 I think was when it started um, which yeah normally that wouldn't necessarily be my favorite era of literature to read but these were just so so good and like I really liked how critical it was of just like society and you know and because it's um, a British talking about like the monarchy and war and all that kind of stuff and I think definitely my favorite um, out of the bunch is London like that is just a flawless a flawless work <laughs> it's it's just so good but yeah so if you're into poetry I would recommend this also if you're not into poetry this might be a good place to start um, if you're looking to more get into the classics yeah and I feel like this was just a turning point for me because again it was like the first poetry that I've actually liked in my life <laughs> But, and I think it just sort of made me less afraid to study it and read it. Although I still tend to avoid it, it I don't get as, like, you know, standoffish around it. But, so yeah, I feel like this was just, it came at a great time in my life. And I think it was really... Um, it was really essential in my formative English literature mind. I don't even know what I'm saying. This is really good. <laughs> this 
next book is, and I've talked about this so much, um, I mentioned it, I think, here on my channel, and I also put it on my Instagram, too, but, um, this is Keeper in Me by Richard Wagamese, and I seriously love this book, like, this is one of my, obviously one of my all-time favorite books, and it just had such an impact on me, I remember I read this in third year university, and if you can believe, this was the first novel that I read by an indigenous author, which is so crazy to me, and I feel like it just really highlights the failings of our education system, um, but it was so good. I thought, like, I love um, Wagamese's writing style, and the characters were just so rich, and like, this story, like, while it talks about a lot of, like, really difficult topics, it was just so heartwarming, and I found that as I was reading it, I was drawing a lot of connections, like, between my own family, and just, like, seriously, if you haven't read this, go read it. Read it right now. <laughs> this is another one that I really want to reread, because it has been a couple of years, but I feel like rereading for me is kind of hard, because I have so many, like, new books that I want to read, but... I do really want to go back to this. Um, oh, actually, now that I'm saying this, I think I had read one other novel by an indigenous author, um, Sherman Alexi, but we won't even get into how problematic that is. <laughs> but yeah, so we'll just erase that from memory. This is what really kind of sparked my fascination and love for indigenous literature, especially indigenous fiction just because I feel like I haven't actually read a bad book by an indigenous author which is like crazy maybe I'm just getting recommended like all the really good ones and stuff but I just love hearing about different cultures and other people's stories and I think because I'm not indigenous myself like we didn't really learn about like anything <laughs> in like in school so I think that it's I'm so grateful to this for opening me up to that um part of the literary scene and getting me into some really good books because there are so many other novels by indigenous authors that I have loved and I don't know maybe I could do a whole separate video on that yeah, and I just think it's so important for non-Indigenous people to read Indigenous literature, whether that's fiction or non-fiction, so we can, you know, support those authors and those voices, and yeah, just read some really good stories. So I'm super grateful to this for opening me up um, to that, and yeah, I think that's why this one hold such a special place in my heart because it was kind of the first that made me really excited and fall in love with indigenous literature. Okay, the next one I'm going to talk about is um, one that again I had read in school and I've read a bunch of her books um, since reading this one and they're all so good but um this one is definitely my favorite it holds a special place in my heart and that is um the flying troutmans by miriam taves and at first <laughs> uh, the title of it i remember had me pretty apprehensive because i was like this is probably gonna be weird but no it was actually so good and just again such a heartwarming story even though they're dealing with a lot of like really difficult things and I think the reason why this one is so important to me is because it kind of again was one that opened me up to exploring more um, Canadian women's writing and just you know exploring that scene and supporting those authors i think has been really awesome and there are so many great writers like can well canadian writers in general but also um canadian um women's writing too or people who identify as wom um women 
and yeah it's just so good i love the characters in this and i think it talks about a lot of really important topics um and it also one of the central themes in like all of maroon tapes is writing is like the relationship between sisters it's kind of sort of like auto fiction um but which i love because i have two sisters so <laughs> it's always fun to read about that kind of stuff and yeah, this was another one that kind of really got me into more literary novels and I really applaud like her writing style and just so many good literary references in here too, <laughs> which is always fun to read, you know, as a literature, or I guess former now, but if, literature student. Um, and yeah, I think that if you want to st um, start with Miriam Taves' work, a lot of people read A Complicated Kindness first because I think that's her most popular one, or at least that's the first one that I read, but this one by far has been my favorite. Wow, I mean all of them are good though, but yeah, this would just came at a time where I just really fell in love with it and I have no bad things to say about this book. <laughs> And I'm happy that it came along when it did. So the last physical book that I have here with me is a, a non-fiction one. I thought I would throw a non-fiction one in there. And ah, oh, this book is just like so, so important and really, I think, it, enlightening and it really just helped shape my perspective on a lot of things and it was just, I can't say enough good things about it. And it's The Truth About Stories by Thomas King. Um, and I think this is like a written version of um, some lectures that he did for CBC. But it's basically just like it has um, a bunch of different essays and, well, I guess speeches um, in here. Just talking about um, his, a lot of his experiences with racism and what it's like to be indigenous and I think everybody <laughs> everybody needs to read something like this or I don't know and I think if you are trying to get into King's writing because he has so many amazing books and stories um, I think this is a really good place to start especially because it's really short so it's a pretty quick to get through but it also just has so many impactful stories and it's just, ah, it's just amazing, <laughs> like really, um, truly amazing. Yeah, and I think this again was just one that really kind of was eye-opening and I think that everyone, no matter whether you're indigenous or non-indigenous, could benefit from reading this book. And I'm so glad that I came across it because it really is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, nonfiction um, works of literature. So, yeah, grateful to Thomas King for writing this. <laughs> okay, and I think one of the last ones I'm going to talk about, which I don't have with me because I lent it to my sister and I don't know what she did with it. <laughs> it's The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas and boy oh boy do I love this book. I read it a few summers ago and I think that is one of the only books that has like ever made me like cry in real life. It was just so powerful and so heartbreaking but also moving and inspiring and just powerful in so many ways and I loved that it was like a YA book because like it was a story like it was fictional but it like felt so real and you really get so attached to all the characters and what they're fighting for and I think it also well it's sad that it's still so relevant now because it's you know dealing with racism and all that stuff but and I think even at the moment that I read it we were still going through all of that so I think it was just really really made a lasting impact on me and it's one of the few novels 
that I've read that just made me like feel so much emotion and like like not controlling it and yeah I don't know it's one that left such a lasting impression on me and I'm so excited to read um I guess it's technically the prequel um Concrete Rose which I have on my bookshelf and I'm reading it next I'm putting it out there make me read it next whoever watches this video but um yeah it was so so good and I'm so excited to see um what else Angie Thomas does in her writing yeah really looking forward to reading her next book but yeah and I think The Hate You Give is another book that like literally everyone should read <laughs> it was just so powerful and I think there are just so many teachable lessons that you can take from it um and which I've heard now that it's being taught in some schools which is really awesome um and yeah I'm sad that I don't have the physical copy here with me I'm uh, throwing some shade to my sister <laughs> to return it I can like picture myself like sitting down reading it and like feeling all the emotions of like what was going on which I can't say that for most books <laughs> especially because my memory is so horrible to have that like clear vivid image I think really speaks to how amazing this book actually is anyways I think that's the last thing I'm going to talk about in today's video um I should have a February March reading wrap up coming soon or at least at the end of the month <laughs> um because I was gonna do a February one but I didn't read enough books in February like I kind of have been in a reading slump lately but um but this past week I read a couple more so hopefully by the end of the month I'll have enough to do like a what I've been reading the last <laughs> two months um video so yeah stay tuned for that I'm excited there are some great books that I want to talk about in there too but yeah I would be interested if anybody watches this or makes it this far to know what your all-time favorite or life-changing books are um but yeah thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you next time bye <laughs>